G'day guys, Jeff here. So, Alpha Protocol. I just picked up a game because it only cost me uh, $40, I believe, and I even had a voucher for Best Buy, so I think it was cheaper than that in the end. Um, here you can just see me going through uh, and trying to work up my character into various skill areas. It's an interesting game. Uh, I would say it's probably better to rent and probably do the single player through um, a weekend. I don't know if it you know, it's worthwhile purchasing, but I had a little bit of fun with it. The reason I'm producing this video actually is because I was live streaming Alpha Protocol testing some of my new upload bandwidth, and I uh, also worked out a few better settings. So I want to say thanks, Bendro, for sorting out uh, some of the capture side of things. It was, I had some buggy problems. I also want to say thanks to the people in the stream as well. Azura, I think you were one of them. Uh, thanks for the information on the Flash Media Encoder changes. Just little tweaks here and there, even though I know what I'm doing with computers, those little tweaks seem to help us out. So Alpha Protocol is a story about a dude, you, and uh, that's not me, obviously, because he's ugly, but um, the guy in the background, it flash forwards between the, you know, the future, or the now and the then, and you play the character that's in the uh, doorway there as an agent, you wake up in this random medical facility and it plays out a lot like Heavy Rain, um, a little bit of Matrix and a, a little bit of uh, role playing I could say, and it's a spy espionage type thing where making decisions affects how those characters, the non-playing characters uh, appear to you or what they do to help you and whatnot. and even though the storyline follows a certain, a certain route, your choices in dialogue actually dictate how they respond to you as I mentioned so it dictates the type of gameplay so you can save some people execute bad guys or you know bribe them for some money or whatever and uh, you work your way through here's an example of a decision now there's a few clunky things with it like I do not like the targeting system at all for aiming it's a little bit off also the hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat is slightly strange and also, if you're crouching your character and running around, it looks like really retarded. I don't know what's wrong with the guy, but it doesn't look uh, it doesn't look right. Um, they should have spent a little bit more time on it. So, in terms of playability, um, I think a once through is all it would get out of it. I don't know if repeat playability would be in there unless you wanted to change the storyline. There's an example of me still punching the air after I get through the guy. You got some interesting little challenges in here, in here, but they get mundane after a while. For instance, here's an example of me bypassing a circuit board. What I do here is I actually pick the number and then trace backwards just with my eye, so it's very quickly, uh, it's easy enough to work that out. You get a lot better at it. So your character can rank up in various things. I showed you at the start, which is quite cool. So you can get special abilities, and you end up being able to hold a lot of equipment, a lot of gadgets, and two primary weapons like a shotgun or dual SMGs, which is kind of fun. There's uh, also uh, a stealth component to it. Here he looks kind of funny walking around. There's a stealth component to it as well, but I find that it's a lot harder to hide, like, unlike Splinter Cell, which is easy to hide. So in this, even though you think you're hidden, you get found, and then before you know it, you have to go full noise and shoot people with assault rifles and whatnot. Um, when the alarm goes off, you can hack them and change a few things which ends up being quite cool. Um, in terms of the weapons, there's a huge array of weapons and whatnot, but we'll get into that later. You can change the appearance. I was having a bit of fun with this. You can give the guy like a full-on massive beard and uh, you know an Aussie slouch hat or baseball cap or whatever it is. Um, you have to uh, also follow, as you hack computers, you have to follow email threads and perhaps sometimes reply to people so it can change the direction of the story on whether they like you or not. I find that with all but uh, two of the female characters that I've come across so far, it's better to be suave and try to pick them up. Whereas if they're like uh, tough characters or very, very meek characters, then you have to be, you have to respond to them in that manner or choose that type of response in that manner. Just reading some random emails here. So let's have a look at some of the weapons that you can buy. This is like a, a black market because uh, your operator is an agency that has... Uh, like even the CIA and NSA etc aren't supposed to know of you it's one of these things that could pack up shop and then it creates a new agency with similar people all over again and I'm not going to give away the story about what happens to you but looking at these weapons some of them are very cool they get very expensive as well so you have to as you're doing missions you have to kind of kill a few people to get money off them anyway so I think it more lends itself to combat rather than stealth although 
like I said, the stealth component could be used. It's just uh, that's not what I do. And the people in the stream could probably attest to that, that I'd rather open up and shoot some people. Here's a nice little an animation to get to some of your weapons. I haven't uh, increased my armor mods here, but I would imagine you can have more placement of things if you buy bigger flak jackets or whatnot. Um, going through just picking various weapons. You can also have different types of ammunition, you know, subsonic for the assault rifles and phosphorus. Uh, you can have different shotgun sl slugs as well, and we're looking at an assault rifle there. So looking at some combat here, I've got the dual SMGs and you know, there's a couple of bad guys. This is one of my first encounters, so I'm just having a look at various gadgets and whatnot. I'm going to throw a grenade at them and see what happens, kill a few. And part of the environment is usable as well, such as climbing up ladders or using zip lines. Using cover is a big part of it as well. You end up having a handler. Uh, I can't actually I can't talk about that too much otherwise it might give some stuff away but the person I'm talking to right now helps you with various things and you can choose to act towards them in a different way as well to get different outcomes and uh, different mission priorities per se. I've noticed that during various missions sometimes uh, depending on what you do in that map there will be other side missions that come up uh, if you just ignore looking around it ends up being a primary uh, mission. Now this is on normal difficulty and uh, occasionally it gets hard when you come up across a boss character but in relative cases you could get shot a few times, turn around, shoot the person and move on. So the combat is very limited in that respect. In the top right you can see the alarms being activated and uh, you can turn that off by various gadgets or hacking the alarm system or, or whatever comes your way. Outside of that guys, uh, that's Alpha Protocol. I want to talk about some recent videos of mine that have gone up there. Welcome to all the subscribers who recently came from Onslaught. For those of you who aren't subscribed to him, check it out. The link up the top of the dual commentary that we just did. I was interviewed on a podcast recently. Huppet Gaming was published in Hyper Magazine in Australia, which is awesome. Domination Chess is where I break down for Vela. It's a series where I may go through the Modern Warfare 2 maps just to close it off in my line of thinking but it's primarily primarily going to be focused on Black Ops so I'm just going to get some experience with Modern Warfare 2 I know you guys have seen it so bear with me you might learn something you might not but I want to tweak how I provide that to you get some feedback from you guys and then we'll go full on into Black Ops with Domination Chess Lastly, there's a survey where you can win prizes. This isn't a dodgy survey. Survey. It doesn't make me money um, or anything like that. It's linked for Huppet. It's through SurveyMonkey, which is a reputable company. And we uh, ask a few questions just about what video editing software people are using so that we can think about releasing videos and how-tos and whatnot on that. It literally takes 12 to 15 seconds. It literally, you can hold me to that. And I'll put a link in the description. Please fill it out. And Woody will release something along those lines as well. But until next time, guys, see ya. And I'm going to leave you with the new Huppet Gaming logo. Until next time, guys, see ya.